Let's take a look at a classic volt stick type device. I say volt stick type device because the very first of the units were called volt sticks. All the modern ones that call themselves volt sticks are really just clones, although the original manufacturer is still there and they can justifiably call it volt stick. I can recall buying one at full price. It was quite a novel item at the time. It was quite expensive. I'm pretty sure the original had an aluminium body and uh, that's they've changed to plastic now for safety. So the point of these is that if you have a live wire, and here I've got a live wire at 240 volts, carefully folded over and heat shrinked at the end, if you place your volt stick tester next to it, it will light up. Now you might not actually see that too well, so I'll tell you what, I'm just going to take the exposure off here, like this, and then demonstrate it. So when you push it up, it actually, it pulses at sort of 50 or in the case of America, it would pulse at 60 hertz. But it's quite good in the sense that you don't need to break the wire to actually test if there's a presence of voltage on that wire. One thing to note, you can't use it through screen cables and you can't hold the wire like this if you're actually testing because if you do, it creates an equipotential field across it and it'll stop it testing reliably. So you have to keep your fingers well away from where it's going. And also in some instances, wet cables can also affect it. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to bring the lighting back. Watch your eyes. And we're back. So the way this device works is it detects the capacitive coupling of current from a live cable. All cables have that slight uh, capacitive coupling. It's very low, but it's enough to be picked up by a very high level amplifier in here. And that provides the tip couples on capacitively, and then there's another capacitive connection through your body to ground. And uh, some of these sticks, they just won't light like this one when uh, you're not holding it. You have to actually hold it to provide that reference to actually make it light. This stick also has the really annoying habit of making a bad connection because the battery holder inside is too tight. And it means, I'm just going to thump this. It means that, uh, no, it, it's making a bad connection. I don't use this one. It's just, yeah, it's not a good design. But I'll show you what's inside. Uh, but I was going to say there that uh, sometimes the volt sticks will actually, uh, they're sensitive enough that they can just act like an antenna and actually light up, but others you actually have to be holding it to actually do that. So let me open this one and we'll explore it. And then I shall reverse engineer it. I can remember taking my first one to bits. This is a little brass cap in the end. I wonder if I can pull, no, I won't be able to pull the other end off. Hold on. I'm just going to use techniques. So here's a little brass cat that makes connection to the negative end of the batteries with a little wire going up there to the side. Let's try and get the batteries out. See, this is why this isn't a great design because it snugs the batteries and uh, it means that when they move inside, if you bump it in your toolbox, it can actually pull them away from the connection at the end. So there's that wire there. And this comes out here. And the circuit board comes out to reveal three little transistors. It's all through hole. A resistor, an LED, and a little antenna based on a sort of spring. They've got a wire up the middle of the antenna. That almost defeats it to the degree of actually having a little long spiral antenna. But um, let's, uh, let's explore this. I shall take it apart. I shall take some pictures of it, and then we can explore the circuitry and reverse engineer it. One moment, please. And resume, now that I've taken the pictures and I have reverse engineered it. So here's the three transistors. They're C3199. They're just standard NPN transistors. We've got the LED at the end there, and we've got a 3 megohm resistor here. Orange, black, and green. Orange, black, and then five zeros. Uh, should I say three, zero, and five zeros to give that full value. The... Circuitry is not what I was expecting. I thought this was going to be what's called a Darlington, just a three cascaded three transistor Darlington array. Um, so I've done some experiments. Let me show you the actual circuitry first. So here is the actual circuit. This little spring here, it's not an inductor, it's just the antenna feeds into the base of a transistor. The current that's coupled onto that capacitively from the live wire, that effectively acts like a capacitor, and uh, it couples onto that and it induces a very tiny base current in this transistor. The transistor amplifies that up, and it's probably like microamps, nanoamps, picoamps, it's very low, but this transistor boosts it up by a few hundred times. And then, and this is quite interesting because 
I've never really thought about this. It's a kind of one of those moments that you go, oh, that's clever. In the past, I've built similar devices, but I put my resistor uh, there, the resistor that's designed to stop it being too sensitive. And as a result, even with the high value of resistor, it was a bit still, it wasn't, it actually pulled it down too much. They've put a pull down resistor, 3 mega ohm, at the second stage, because this is where that tiny amplification then feeds into the next transistor, which then multiplies by another few hundred times. And then it feeds the next transistor that multiplies a few more hundred times and it lights an LED. The placement of the LED in this one is odd. I expected this not to be connected. I expected that to be the classic Darlington. A Darlington is just where they cascade the transistors and the first one, see multiplies it by 300, the next one, 300 again, then 300 again. And it results in a really massive gain. Uh, I expected it to look like that, but it's not. And it's quite clever because uh, this one, as the LED turns on, the rail here actually pulls down towards the zero volt rail. So it kind of self-regulates and that limits the current through the LED. I think they've done that to give us a constant current thing with the LED. I'm not sure. Uh, it operates down to 2.5 volts and the current is typically around about 10 milliamps. So ultimately, that's it. A capacitively coupled signal comes on, gets amplified multiple stages to light the LED. I shall show you the ones I built after I've uh, shown you my other version. I thought, what if you cascaded the Darlingtons and then you put the transistor, the LED, should I say, down to the zero volt rail? I was expecting that uh, as the voltage increased across ultimately the, the LED, it would raise the emitter here and uh, then it would actually mean it would, would be hard to turn on. So that would self-regulate. In reality, it's not a great approach because the LED is already two volts. And then it's, you've got the base voltage with reference to the emitter above that and it just made it very in insensitive. So I'll show you afterwards. It's not a good version. It takes too high a voltage. It would work fine at higher voltages, but at the three volts, it's just on the borderline of operation. It means it's the dimmest of the, them all. I also built the one more or less based on my thought of what this was going to be. In this case, the antenna goes to the first transistor, then the second, then the third. I've put there a 3.3 mega ohm resistor. It's a standard value here as the first, uh, as the sort of gain adjuster. That is very clever. That is really clever. Um, and then I've just, without any current limiting, I've just put the LED straight there. This one operates the lowest voltage, 2 volts, and it draws about 20 milliamps. I think that's fine. But let me show you the result of my experiments. I have my live wire here to test them. So let me just grab these devices. I cobbled them together out of discrete transistors, uh, BC547. So this is one based on the original circuitry. I shall turn it on, and when it's brought near the wire, it lights up. Let me just bring that up a little bit closer here. It works fine. It's got a, a reasonable sensitivity. Works quite well. The next one is the LED to zero volts. This was not a great one. There's the, the LED's in a different position. I'll just bend that up. This is a terrible idea. I'll probably snap it off. Now, when I hold this one nearby, you can see it's lit, but it's not very bright because of that voltage difference, so it's not that great. But my favourite, my favourite of these designs is the plain uh, Darlington. This one, which actually makes the LED brighter. Uh, and it's the sort of simplest design, ultimately. It's the one I thought it originally was. But having said that, theirs is quite clever. This one has advantage. It'll work down to the lowest voltage. Uh, it'll work right down to about two volts. Um, because it's not relying on... Uh, acting as some sort of like, it's not got some sort of current regulation circuit in it. And it, it makes it quite bright because it does like that little bit higher intensity. It's quite good. So my favourite of the ones I built is this one. The simple Darlings. Let me show you that schematic again. It was a, it was this one. Very, very simple. If you want to make one of these experimentally, uh, just use any NPN transistors. You can get the, we've got the collector emitter and the base. And basically speaking, the base is the original input, then you've got the emitter switching the current through to the base of the next, and then the next emitter switching it to the base of the next, just amplifying up 
all those times. There's not really that much point making one of these though, because uh, you can get them quite cheaply in the pen form, and they're usually quite reliable. You also get the audible ones. This one is just basically glowing all by itself, largely because of that. I've got a live wire lying on the bench. Hmm. But they are, they're, they're so cheap and, you know, available. I wouldn't necessarily say, I would say it's useful to add to your toolbox. You don't have to buy an expensive one. It's, it's a useful thing for quick checks uh, and double checks before actually carefully separating wires uh, if you, you've no guarantee that they're isolated. Uh, but it, as just a part of your toolbox, it's actually pretty good. Um, and they're cheap, so by all means you could build one if you wanted it just for the fun. This is very similar to the ghost detecting circuit with an antenna on it. I'm kind of looking at that resistor there and thinking that would be an improvement to the ghost detector circuit. I may revisit that now. All that did was detect a DC static field in there. Oh, another thing that's worth mentioning. If you want to test these things, uh, just swipe them down the shirt and you'll usually... Uh, you'll get a sta the static charge will actually make them glow and flicker uh, just while you're swiping them. That's a good uh, basic test uh, if you've nothing else that you can guarantee to test on the vicinity that would give it the proper indication. But there we go. Super simple circuits. Uh, quite interesting. I quite enjoyed building those ones. And it's just the classic uh, capacitively coupling voltage detector. <laughs>